Thomas, I wonder if I could read you something uh, from Monday's Independent, a little extract, if that's all right with you. Yes, go ahead. OK, this is from a lady called uh, Yasmin Alibi Brown, and say it's Monday's Independent, and she said, <laughs> Shame on those women between 20 and 40 who have squandered the hard-won achievements of original feminism. And to add insult to self-injury, these younger generations seem proud that they dissed and dumped all we fought for. We expected better and more from those who followed. It is, I know, very fashionable these days for the young to blame baby boomers boomers for being selfish and spoiling it all. Well enough of that, I squarely blame the young who, through foolish apathy, criminal self-indulgence and sometimes uninformed loathing of the women's movement, have ensured that our social, political and economic environment is less fulfilling, much less safe, less equal and less nurturing than it was even in the 1970s and 1980s, when we were old... F when we old femmes were burning bras and raising hell. How do you uh, square up a modern feminism against 60s feminism, which uh, Yasmin is talking about there? Yeah, it's very interesting, all right. I'll tell you how this came about recently. In the last few weeks, I got myself a large print copy of 1984, right. Orwell's book, and because I wanted to do an in-depth study of it, I wanted to write lots of annotations in the margins. Mm -hmm. And I got to the part about Winston Smith's, you know, first wife and how she was sexually, you know, unresponsive and cold. And then this Julia character comes along who pretends to be a member of the Anti-Junior Anti-Sex League, yeah. and she's very sexually liberated. And there's one part in the book where she explains to him and it's, it's probably one of the most insightful this, the, the book is amazing anyway but it's one of the most insightful you know passages in literature where she says that the purpose of the anti-sex league is so people do not use up their energy sexually because when people have a happy sexual experience or a good mm -hmm. sex life or they're making love they yeah. don't care about the, the government they don't care about hating enemies they, they can't be whipped up into frenzies against like against you know other wars and other countries and stuff yeah. and that's why why they had the anti-sex league in 1984 that's why Ingsoc and Big Brother encouraged you know sex no sex except for procreation because mm -hmm. they wanted all that negative and all that energy stored up that sexual energy that was stored up in the citizens to be mm -hmm. used at times of hate propaganda mass hysteria for the purpose of the party right. now this was just interesting and I went online and I just typed in as a joke I typed in anti-sex league feminism and yeah. I found a couple of message feminist message boards which are mainly based in the US one was in the UK and one was in Canada mm -hmm. and these women were saying that for Halloween parties they should dress up as members of the anti-sex league from the book with the, with the overall the black overalls and the grey overalls right. and the red sash mm -hmm. and uh, it just seemed funny enough to begin with and then uh, reading comments down further what came across to me was how they were these these young feminists were absolutely endorsing the views put forward by the anti-sex league in this fictional novel to them that sounded right they mm -hmm. want they, they, their hatred of men was amazing and uh, it was based on this idea that they were failures in their I thought I could tell you know I don't like to psychoanalyze people but I could see feminism today is basically made out of you know I'm talking about mainstream feminism is mm -hmm. basically made up of women who failed in their relationships with the opposite sex and have found a way of hating men in order to compensate for this failure that's a very different than they they endorse really? this they endorse this true things like promoting abortion and you know seeing rapists everywhere and so on the reality is that has nothing to do with the <laughs> attributes of early feminism early feminism stood for all the right things equal pay social justice well equal done. rights voting, democratic inclusion, safety mm -hmm. from, you know, sexual harassment in the workplace, Excellent. all wonderful, noble things. These have now been transcended by a very different form of feminism, which is as far away from those ideals than, than you know, you know, <laughs> it was in the Middle Ages they've changed so rapidly, and that's because the feminist movement, I'm absolutely convinced, has been co-opted by either political or corporate interests. Sometimes in the late, the mid 1970s, in order to 
drive a wedge between men and women in order to make people more dependent on the state, break up the family, and to double the taxation. That's really what it's come down to now. Also, I believe that it's part of a population reduction program in order to have women not having babies. And this is why feminism, in my opinion, I could be wrong, has descended into a kind of an abortion cult. I'm not anti-abortion. I'm not a Catholic. I don't you know, have an issue with people who want to have an abortion. But it just seems to me the sacred sacrament with modern feminism is the abortion followed by the belief that all men are potential rapists. I find this is a very unhealthy thing. It's da- I don't damaging. think that's anything to do with and feminism. I- Sorry? I don't think that's much to do with feminism. You know, if somebody thinks somebody is a rapist, and maybe because that person might actually be, um, not all men are rapists, obviously, clearly, and I'm sure there's not many i hope i don't think there's any women women out there that have that much of an issue with men i think the whole feminist idea is in regards to chauvinistic men that feel that women's places are in the home and you're to stay at home you are to have babies you are to cook clean and look after them and we live in a modern day society where women have careers we like to make our own money we like to buy our own houses we like to drive our own cars we like to you know be able to take ourselves out and do things for ourselves and not have to rely on a man to do it for us but it doesn't mean that we don't like them we don't find them sexually attractive you know as long as they keep their mouths shut (laughs) well well well, you know i'll try not to give an episode on this next one but absolutely i agree with you you just basically re- reiterated what I stated in the in the opening segment just then. Yes, that's what it's all about. But that's not what it is now. If you go on me- on, on feminist message boards and web websites now, it has descended into something very, very dark these days. There's a tremendous amount of real anger there. I can understand some of it. I know there's still chauvinistic men. I know there's still men who do see women as sex objects. I do know there's a lot of women. There's still a glass ceiling and women are still still not fully represented within the upper echelons of business, marketing, communications, you name it. But at the same time, too, I think that feminism should stand for more than putting women inside helicopter gunships so they can murder women in the Middle East. I find that quite remarkable. They're actively encouraging women to join NATO forces in US feminism. They're so happy when their sisters are in the helicopter gunship firing bullets into a house in Pakistan or Afghanistan and slaughtering the women inside it. I think if feminism was to really stand for something today, it would say women, sisters, don't join the military. Don't get into the helicopter gunship. Be better than men. Be superior to men. Show compassion that men don't show and women should be leading the world the feminist movement should be leading the world in this in 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 the new peace movement not encouraging their sisters to go in you know go girl into a helicopter and show you can be just like a brutal and sadistic slaughterers and murderous danny man and this is sadly where it's gone and this is this is this is where i take umbrage with it i have no problem with the mainstream original beliefs of feminism i understand why they came about i understand why they exist but it's descended into something very very dark now and the comparisons as i was saying at the beginning between the anti-sex league and george orwell's 1984 and where feminism mainstream feminism is right now is an uncanny comparison and it only serves to warn us that the, you know that we should pay attention to the allegories and motifs within popular fiction and literature because often they tell us and they reveal truths about the world that we live in that are far too painful for us to accept directly so they need to be delivered to us in the form of allegory and I think that's why George Orwell in my opinion made character Julia the greatest character in fictional history because she knew the world was corrupt she knew it was run by crazy people and by psychopathic institutions but she chose to be a free person below the the surface of the control system and to be her own you know sort of insurgent in her own consciousness and live her life outside that and that's why the the, the character of of Julia in 1984 is that for me is a is a is a, a sort of an almost like a character of transcendence away from the kind of world that we're heading into and I can guarantee you that 
the, the mainstream feminist movement today is as much part of this lockdown on human consciousness to distort us, to cause problems among society, to create fears, suspicions and division. And that's the last thing we need. We need men and women coming together. We don't need men and women being split apart. I don't like when women hate men. I don't like when men hate women. I want us to come together as brothers and sisters and that was the character of Julia that's what she was saying I'm a woman I am here I am free but I'm not going to fall for the pathological control of women through the anti-sex league and I see that anti-sex league mentality Mm -hmm. echoed as a non allegorical reality within the feminist movement and it's quite interesting and amazing to watch and one thing that um, springs to mind from what you've said there um, there is this adage that if women ruled the world there would be no wars and the thing is the immediate person that comes to I'm mind when you say sure that I'm not sure about that I'm going to be honest well um, th- this is the thing because I was going to say Margaret Thatcher so I mean in terms of your opinion of, of Margaret Thatcher and how she's in the mix on this Uh, I didn't think she was too bad. She sorted out the financial economy at that time and she got it back on board. Now, we didn't like the things that she had to do in order to restore, but sometimes things have to happen that we don't like if our economy gets into a certain state. And unfortunately enough for her, the time that she took on, um, you know, being the, um, you know, the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom was a time where somebody had to put their foot down and do something about it. And that's it entirely what she did um you know we can't blame her what would we have done differently to put things back on track given you know that was our our situation to deal with and um you know then I, I, I don't blame her. We, you know, we hate it because, you know, we had to then start paying council taxes and et cetera, et cetera. But our economy got put back on track. You know, our finances and our our economy got put back on track. Um, and that's exactly what a prime minister has to do. And generally, a lot of the time when it comes to managers, leaders, et cetera, mm-hmm. um, you know, how many people like their boss? The, the, the secret to Margaret Thatcher is... Uh, not so much what she did um, during uh, uh, over a decade in power, but what the the real the real crux of the matter is why she was ousted uh, from her position of prime minister. That's the key for me as as to what's been going on in the background, and uh, it's since been revealed that the reason why um, she was ousted was she realised what the true nature of the European union was um um what the objective was um long term uh, thomas do, do, do you do you see it, it similar way uh well to me she was a despicable lunatic and the day she died i had a party but